Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's morning ramble. And I wanted to kind of pick up on this year without fear theme because it, it, it strikes me that firstly, there's a difference between fear as in the visceral survival mechanism of the biological organism which is a good thing and actually keeps one safe and being afraid which is what we do when we scare ourselves with our thinking and of the various things that we can be afraid of that we can scare ourselves about and there is literally no Nothing's off limits. You can scare yourself about pasta. You can scare yourself about aliens. You can scare yourself about money. You can scare yourselves about politics. You can scare yourself about umbrellas. I, I used to do phobia cures as part of my work. And one of the things that was fascinating is people could have a phobia of anything. And at one point, I think maybe twice, but I definitely once, you know, as well as the sort of more typical phobias like needle phobias or spider phobias, I helped somebody with a phobia of jello. Like, you know, like uh, the jiggly jelly. It, it, they literally would freak out when they would see it. And, and so being afraid has nothing to do with being safe. And there, the particular thing in, in, in the Inside Out Revolution, the, the, the opening epigraph, the, the first thing I say is, is a quote from the Scottish mystic Sid Banks. If the only thing people learned was not to be afraid of their experience, that alone would change the world. Now think about that for a minute. If the only thing people learned was not to be afraid of their experience, why would that change the world? Because we culturally are so afraid of certain experiences that we'll do pretty much anything to avoid them. Now, it might be idiosyncratic which experiences. You might be scared of feeling angry. So you will do anything to avoid being angry and you'll be the super nice person who everybody really likes while you're silently seething inside. Or you may be afraid of your fear. That's a very common one. and. And you think, oh, if I, you know, and so you'll be very brave and everyone will think you're really cool and be really surprised that you're a scaredy cat. Or you may be afraid of happiness. You, you can be afraid of sadness. That's what a lot of depression winds up being, is being afraid of everything and then being afraid of sadness on top of it. When we're afraid of our experience, we try to avoid it. And because we think our experience comes from outside events, we wind up either trying to control the world around us in order to control the way we feel and avoid experiences we don't want to have. Or we, we try to control our thinking so that we, we don't think thoughts that will make us feel a certain way. But if we weren't afraid of our experience, there, there's a beautiful Buddhist saying, having neither a preference for speech nor silence that I kind of use as a guide in my coaching work. Well, similarly, what if you had neither a preference for happiness nor sadness, for anger or joy, for fear or for love? Now, I'm not saying I don't. I definitely have preferences. But what if it wasn't as big a deal as it feels like to you. Because what I've found for me is the more I see that I can't have an experience without thought and that there is a space before thought where I'm always okay and it's always safe, then experience kind of becomes like going to the movies. You might prefer comedies to, to tragedies or you might prefer horror films to other kinds of movies. But you don't have to avoid movies just because they're movies. Like, okay, you might not pay money to go to it, but if you wake up in the cinema one day, you know, you'll, you'll probably see it through to the end. So that's sort of my thought for today, for this morning's ramble. 
is what if you didn't have to be afraid of your own experience? And if you have thoughts, if that sparks anything in you, please let me know, write it in the, in the comments section below. Have fun, learn heaps, and talk to you soon.